Hey everybody, it's Kay. Thank you for watching. And I did notice I got a bunch of new subscribers. Thank you for joining the family. If you're new and you're watching this, please go ahead and subscribe. I decided to start this YouTube journey to be able to share my fertility journey in the hope that it will inspire and motivate you. And maybe you'll be able to take away a tip or two. I upload new videos every Tuesday. Be warned, they are IVF rough, as I like to call it raw videos that really talk about my experience. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the tips that I feel might help with regards to how we handled our failed transfers. I will also actually include in the information bar the specific videos from my uh, fertility vlog journey of those failed transfers so you can kind of see the realness of what we went through in the hopes that um, you everything that I talk about today will make um, more sense. First, we're gonna start with a little bit of history. You'll notice from the videos in the information bar that we underwent, I would say, two failed transfer attempts and a failed ERA mock cycle. So I'll give you that historical background and then the lessons learned. The first transfer attempt, we did a three-day frozen embryo transfer and a fresh transfer um, in the hopes that those two opportunities would work. It was early on in our IVF journey and we were very excited about that as you can imagine. That transfer cycle ended up failing and failing significantly. Not only did the frozen embryo transfer not work, for the fresh embryo transfer, my egg at retrieval ran away. And as you know, I'm undergoing mini IVF, have very little eggs, so when that egg ran away, nothing was retrieved. So I essentially, um, you know, just did the FET when I was in LA, came back home, transfer failed. Now I'll talk a little bit about the ERA mock transfer cycle that failed. The ERA test was an idea that I got from a YouTuber called Laura Laws, and she was similar age group. She underwent IVF twice. The reason the first cycle failed was because the doctor did not do an ERA. And from then on, I decided I'm gonna learn from her. I will definitely, if I'm blessed enough to get there, I will do an ERA. But my first ERA mock transfer cycle failed. And as you can see from the videos below, the reason it failed was because um, my progesterone went up and it interfered with the conditions. Because remember the ERA test, the receptivity status, you are either receptive at the time that the sample is taken or non-receptive, and then they can tweak the protocol. But it gives you the information that you need when you go through the transfer process. So we had to do the ERA mock twice. The second ERA ended up working out. So after that, we then did the transfer, the second official transfer. That transfer cycle was also um, a failure in terms of it was canceled. Um, it did not end up working out for us. Um, one of the reasons was because my body was not calmed enough by the use of birth control pills, and that was uh, critical in ensuring that the frozen embryo transfer would be successful. So when my doctor called me to say that um, it is best that I, I take the birth control pills for two whole weeks to be able to relax my body at the next attempt, it was a no-brainer. So. Um, we went ahead and did that. So transfer did not work out as we hoped. Picked right back up, did the birth control pills, and then did the transfer that led to my pregnancy. So that's a little bit about the historical journey. Next, I'll tell you about key lessons learned using those failures. First lesson learned from the first transfer cycle is from that day on, I said, I am going to allow my embryos to make it to the fifth day and then get the grading so that I can know what a condition they are and then PGT a test because um, it was really, really important for my transfer cycle to work. That's hard to do because it means that you may end up with new embryos um, and that's fine. I mean, it happened to us um, where go through that before we got the euploid and, and we would just not get out of the cycle with anything. But it was important for me to know the information ahead of time 
because my worst fear was, um, you know, to go through a miscarriage and have to go through a DNC, which would take away time. And um, since I was 43 at the time, I, I wanted to keep going back to back while I had my youth, for lack of a better word. Um, because if you go through miscarriage and DNC, you do need time to recover, and it does take away from that time. And so that was the lesson learned and what we decided to do from that particular cycle. I also really made a decision to no longer do a fresh embryo transfer for, because again, for the lack of information, um, I had too few eggs to put all, you know, all my hopes in a fresh embryo transfer. We needed all the information that we needed. And so um, we decided from that day on that we were going to do frozen embryo transfers moving forward. The failed ERA mock really just reminded me of the nuances of the human body and things that might happen. But it also really taught me the virtue of patience. Um, and I remember it was really difficult because here I am trying to transfer and it's going to cost us almost half a year again. After going through 12 cycles of IVF for a year, I'm gonna have to go through another half a year to get this embryo back in. It was just devastating and frustrating, but it did teach me that being patient and that my doctor was really trying to make sure that when we did transfer, that it would be successful. So hopefully, if you're in that kind of space, that experience will just help motivate you and that you know that you are not alone. And then looking at the transfer cycle itself, um, when it was canceled, again, it was still devastating, but I think at that point, I learned about the importance of having a good doctor who monitors your conditions. So making sure that um, the ERA cycle that was successful was being emulated was critical because it has to mirror that cycle. And so I would say that one was not as tough, even though it was difficult. Um, but again, you know, it's always hard when you're really excited to undergo a transfer and then to find out that it's not going to happen. But like I said, it better not happen than it happen and it not be successful, right? And so we pushed through and I'm excited to share that the next transfer cycle, I would say the fourth time coming, um, ended up being a success and the result of the pregnancy you see me talking about um, in my YouTube channel. So thank you for watching. Hopefully guys, one of those tips there is useful for you. If you have any questions, please remember to let me know. I did put in those historical videos in the information bar so you can at least see the, the rawness of that journey um, and hopefully that will motivate and inspire you. Thank you for watching. Until my next video, bye.